You're out there in London? Yep. Um, How's it going there? It's going pretty well. Um, I'm right now, I mean, this week I've been writing a 20 page research paper for school, but the music's going well, the scene is open. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy my time here. Everything's open and bustling right now, or is are a lot of people basically still on lockdown? Everything's open. We just never closed, even after winter. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that, that's very good. So the music scene is, is thriving and, and doing very well. Yeah, it is. It's good for um, like continuation of shows, because once they stop, it's harder to get new ones. So like last year, we were in lockdown for like five months in London when no one really else was, I feel. But now we're back. What did you do during that lockdown period? Did you do a lot of writing and uh, recording? I did a lot of writing and producing because during that lockdown, I was in my production course. So I was just producing a lot because I have a little studio in my room. Um, yeah, and I played some piano. I don't remember really what I did. I just... Yeah, yeah, I produced mostly. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like this big one long fog. It's yeah, like, it's like a blur, but I was definitely doing things musically. <laughs> yeah, and did you find inspiration like to do that during the lockdown? Was I mean, or was it a challenge really? Because some people are just like, I can't do very much during this. I just can't get my head in the game. Yeah, I had that issue sometimes, but then other days I would just try to sit down at least and start because that's the biggest issue and then I would get into it. But I think there were definitely days where I also did nothing. Yeah. yeah. Having class made me produce. So then, not made me, but like that was the class. So I was producing <laughs> for the class and in that class, I actually am releasing two of the songs I produced for it. And otherwise I did write a few songs. That's all I can tell you about that period. <laughs> it's nice to have academia though, kind of being that disciplinary kind of thing, like, hey, keep yourself in, in order here and keep disciplined. That's, uh, which most performers just do. You know. Yeah, the only sad part was that it had to be on Zoom. So it was hard to like give, because I don't know, it was just hard to actually like interact with other producers. So, but it was still fun and I learned a few things nonetheless. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. how is the, the new release getting received now? It's, uh, there's some really great stuff there. I, it's getting received well, apparently, according to what I'm seeing and hearing from my PR people. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, I had released most of them. I guess Anxiety was released like the week before the EP, but it's really going well. I think it's helping me have more of a like base to go off of when I'm trying to get shows and more interviews. I'm getting a lot of more interviews now from this pre from the, my new press release. So it did help a lot, I think. Yeah, the new EP is, um, how did that come about? What's, uh, what's behind it? Um, that was a close call. Where does that title come from? That's one of the lyrics in Stranger. I guess I wanted to call it that because half the songs I'd written when I was in a different place kind of before I was fully pursuing music and had a bit of like depression and anxiety or whatever and then one of the lyrics from Stranger was that was a close call and I was like oh it was a close call that I almost didn't that I basically had taken a while to figure out how to pursue my musical career because it's kind of like I didn't know producers I didn't know anyone so I was like I have to do it all on my own and once I got into this program here, everything kind of changed and I was focusing full time on that. And then I added like two more songs that I'd written after, but are still kind of from like beginning of like a year and a half ago. 
So now that I have newer songs coming out this year, I was just like, well, that was a close call, but I'm here. <laughs> That's and, and yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you got to be so grateful. It's like, I'm present. I'm going through this. It was about really closing a chapter in your life and moving yeah. on. And Yeah, because two years ago, I would have never known that I'm here. Like, I was working full-time at BMG in quarantine in New York. And I was just like, I'm going to be doing this forever. So yeah, it's clo it's the closing a huge chapter, mainly starting a new one that I'm super excited about because I have so many new songs and my sound is changing and the music's getting better. So very excited. It is, and it's exciting being in a place like London. I'm sure that's quite inspirational too, and probably drawing on experiences there. Yeah, it's really fun. I also have grown up in a lot of different places and lived in many places, so I like it's nice to add another place as well. I feel like this is the first place I really felt like I had my own home. So it's really great right now. Like I'm enjoying being in my mid twenties here in the beginning of my career. Cause I'm, yeah, met a lot of cool musicians and work a lot with them. So, so what, what, what type of- to be in. Oh, it is. It is. I was there years ago and it's just so thrilling. I mean, just doing like, you know, the pub hopping and going through the town and going yeah. near Big Ben. I, I, it's so beautiful, too. Yeah. I love how it's just second nature to go to the pub. I feel like when I lived in New York, I'd be like, anyone want to go to the bar, a bar after work? And I'm like, what bar? Where? And here it's just like the pub. Yeah. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's like, yeah, part of everyday Everyone's life. Like, yep. <laughs> Yeah. it's like such a big deal to have to go out to a bar in any of these yeah in new york they're like well what bar would you want to go to because i don't want to go too far blah blah, blah in here there's like a pub on every corner <laughs> i Not love that, that I'm, you like, yeah always drinking but i'm just saying it's more relaxed <laughs> <laughs> it is it really is I and mean, i just love the fact yeah you really don't have to drive you got the tube and it's just like yeah, I just like that urban kind of living and everything's coming to you. You don't have to come to it so much. <laughs> it's really nice. So uh, the song, Is It a Crime? I like that one. It's a bit, bit faster, has a real good punch to it. How did that one come about? That one actually came about first with the melody, but it was actually first another sound in the song, but then... I went with it to some producers that I was gonna write with and they're like, that needs to be the melody of the hook. And I was like, oh, or no, I think they were like, that can't, something along the lines of that. And then I had already written the lyrics. So I guess it was just about like, I don't know, is it a crime to do like, the general meaning is that everyone should be able to have their own like thoughts and opinions or like, want certain things for themselves that it's not like it's not a crime I'm just I wrote it about wanting a relationship and I was always embarrassed that I, I wouldn't say that to people because I feel like it's like yeah and obviously now I don't care but at the time I was still a bit anxious and like is it a crime basically so I want people to take like that into their daily life whenever they're like doubting anything just be like Unless yeah, I think we could all relate to that, though. You know, it's like we could always feel like, you know, isn't it a crime to like give a crap and to really have, want somebody who really cares about me and I care about them? And it's just, I, yeah, yeah, it's something that's very relatable. You go through so many, like, especially in dating, like people who are just like really not nice about just, just, that they're dating around I don't know this is coming out wrong I just mean that they're like not always people just aren't always nice that's just what it is and I'm like is it a crime to just want someone who's like not rude as fuck it could get so nasty Part of my language <laughs> it's so true it really is it's like yeah that whole scene is just like you could be just so rotten to one another at points too it's it's, it's terrible yeah like at least read an anti-ghosting text like yeah yeah ghosting is <laughs> that that is huge that really is and you did an acoustic version of that too I mean, when did that come yes. out and why was that 
that came about because I just wanted a different version of the song. I think you can like you listen to the lyrics more in that version. Yeah. And it's just deeper. And I really connect to that song and love that song. So I wanted to make sure that it would be heard in like that form as well as the other one. Also, because the other is more like that was one of the first songs like, that I put out, right? So I wasn't sure that I love the sound of it anymore because I like more techno vibe stuff. So I was like, let's just make an acoustic version and it turned out very well. It might, I, like, I might like it better. The yeah, you know, it really shows the range though, not just this house dance music, but it really shows that you know, there's a lot more there, a lot more meaning and, and it's definitely a lot more deep can resonate with people more that way. Yeah, yeah. And then going back to anxiety, I like that um, lyric, there's nothing worse than anxiety. How does that, uh, you got to get that out there on the table, especially these days. Anxiety is just what so many of us are dealing with now. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I was, I mean, I've gotten over it kind of mostly in the last year. Like I'm kind of chilling now. But I obviously had extreme anxiety when I wrote that song. And I guess I was just feeling sorry for myself. But I was like, people who don't struggle with this don't understand how shit it is kind of thing. So that's why I wrote, like, I know it's hard. Like, it's not as hard as life can be. But when it's happening, that's what I believe. Like, So that's just, like probably my most honest song in terms of like every feeling I talk about there which I think can only resonate to people who struggle with it because I get the most reactions to that one after shows I'd say and they're like wow I really felt that song so oh yeah yeah definitely so people. speaking of the live shows um are you doing a lot of that in London now or is that kind of really slowed down you did more of that when you were back in New York I'm no, I'm doing more more in London than I am in New York. Nice. Uh, I've played, I don't know how many, maybe like seven shows here, and I have two coming up before I go to New York in April, and then I have one in New York as well in April. Um. So yeah, I've been like, these promoters found me, and then I they keep rebooking me for shows, I guess, because they like what I did at the last one. So I have two promoters who have rebooked me for two more shows here. And I actually really, I, it's different playing here than it is in New York. They organize it differently. Hmm. But um, I, I enjoy the shows here. It feels more like because they always have a huge lineup and then you're involved with all the artists. Whereas in New York, I could just show up and play and kind of leave kind of thing. I mean, I'm sure if I got different gigs, there would be different. I don't know. But yes, the shows are great here. How are the audiences different, uh, London versus New York? Hmm. Or is it about the same? Everybody's just got like, you know, the same amount of energy. I always kind of wonder, you know, how does... How does the uh, the behavior, the uh, the way they react differently than here in the States? I think right now it's kind of the same. I think that the fact that they're at like, I feel like maybe more people go to sh live gigs in general here, like during the week and stuff. So like sometimes depending on the venue, it'll be like packed here. We're more weekend people here in the States. And there's more random people too who just like walk by and come in. Like, I feel like that's the difference for me, but they react the same, I'd say. <laughs> what type of clubs uh, do you play? Is it, how many seats between uh, London and New York? Seats? Yeah. How big are the uh, venues or the, the type of venues and the, 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 the names of those kind of places? So I played at, um, what's it called? Old Queen's Head here, which had, which was packed. I think there were at least like a hundred people, like packed for the room size. 
Um, and then Amersham Arms probably has like 250. I also played at Arlene's Grocery twice in New York. I think they have a bigger capacity. Um, and I'm playing at Notting Hill Arts Club next month, which I'm really excited about because apparently it's like really legendary and I think they're gonna have a big room. And, but I've yet to see, <laughs> and I'm playing at a slaughtered lamb. And do you, are you in New York? No, I'm in Atlanta. Oh, okay. I'm playing at this place called Brooklyn Music Kitchen in New York. I think they're all up right now, the ones I play around 250. Nice. 100 to 250. Yeah. Mary, that's just got to be so neat to just be back in the live performing after everything we've been through. So that's uh, to feel that vibe. It's just that uh, probably brings it all back. So you were a DJ in New York. How did you get to being a DJ? Yeah, I was about to say I only had my last, my first singing show in June. So I didn't even have singing shows before the pandemic, really. But I was a DJ in New York, yes, for two years. I was playing a lot of shows. Like, those were more like clubs. Now I play pubs. <laughs> uh, but those were really fun. I mean, it varied from being really fun to a bit like, Sometimes playing bars where people are just chatting isn't that fun, but then I would remind myself that I'm getting paid to do that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, right, this is a job, okay. Um, and sometimes I would sing while DJing. I produced a song called Losing Control. I'm actually gonna remake it into a pop song though. And I would sing that live. I would play on yachts. Randomly, I played on a yacht on the East River a couple of times. Oh, that's fun. I bet that's a really cool thing. While doing it. So it, it was fun towards the end. I was like booking a lot. But yeah, that also died after Corona. And I was like, now I've lost my DJ momentum and I'm not a singer. And then I made it here and now I am a singer. <laughs> I mean, in practice. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. But you guys have some kind of like a technical know-how too. So you learned sound engineering. Was was that easy to pick up or just was that a huge challenge being such an artistic person? So I did sound engineering for a year, but then I dropped out when I got a job at BMG because I already had a bachelor's and was like, I would rather if take this job than keep doing this because it was a lot of physics like yeah. I'm not gonna lie yeah. I honestly thought it would be a bit of producing but it wasn't at all and I was in Berlin so it was in German which is fine but I because I speak German because my parents are German but when it got too scientific I was like okay I don't really understand yeah that's got to be just so tough though yeah because you know it's a right brain versus left brain kind of thing it's yeah that's be so we were learning some studio stuff but I wanted to be more in the studio more than they were putting us in there but now at my uni I go to Goldsmiths now and I did a like mini I don't it's not sound engineering it's just be actually it is sound engineering but it's not like all that like physics stuff we were learning here we just do it so that we can like record with other artists and engineer in the room while they record so we know how to record ourselves when we go in alone. So I knew a bit of it before, which was nice. <laughs> Very cool. So what's it like there, Goldsmiths? Uh, meeting, I'm sure, you know, incredible people there. I really like it. It's very liberal there, very nice studios that you can just book for free, obviously. Well, it comes with the price of tuition, but. <laughs> yeah. You can get sound engineers for free because the students just want to practice and it's just really amazing equipment. So I like it. And I've made some friends through the program and I'm learning a lot about like, well, right now I'm doing musicology, but I'm going to do performance next term. I'm really excited for that. And then I'll graduate and be a full time musician. And what degree would that, are you working towards? A master's in popular music. 
Yeah, you don't hear that too much in the in the business. People going through so much academia and really just uh, taking it through that route. It's it's really neat. Yeah, so I chose this program because it's. I looked for so I looked at so many programs, but they were all like, you do one year on the music business, and then you do one year on just stuff that I already knew because I'd worked at a label already. And none of it was practical. It was all just like studying theory, and, which is fine. Like I would also want to study theory, but I was like, at this point, what I'm trying to do is just dive into it. And I'm still learning some things like this musicology class was a core module. So I'm still learning some like theories and stuff. But we are only assessments basically. My, all of last year, my homework was always just to make songs, which was great. Yeah, and some of your music out started as school projects. Like, is it a crime? Yeah, and I didn't expect any of those because I, would, for, especially for the production class, I would heard them so many times that I just thought they were horrible because I was like, I had to mix and master it too. So wow. I just really heard every part of it so often. And I was like, these are just horrible. And then when <laughs> I went to LA and to work with producers, they're like, what do you have? So working with Ari Blitz and Luke Shretha and um, Simon J, they're amazing. And they're like, oh wait, no, Ari was like, that's sick. And then they, we rolled with that and made two sick songs, so. Yeah, I'm happy about it, that it didn't go to nothing. I was like, thank God they weren't horrible. I'm so happy. It's so easy to become like self-critical like that too, because you hear something so much, especially when you're putting together any kind of art, you got to put this to bed at some point. And it's like, I think the more you keep tinkering with something, you can make it even worse. And it's like, now there's got to be a point where you say, ah, enough, I got to get this thing out here. Yeah. I definitely also have to be like, I can't listen to this for a while or I'm just going to lose any opinion I ever had because I'll just not. You just shelve it. <laughs> you know, I don't really listen to like the released ones unless I'm like practicing them. But once that, hmm. I'm like, okay, that's done. <laughs> so how did you get to uh, meet music exec Charlie Walk? He launched Lord and people like that. And Lord is amazing, who I've seen. I know. Ariana Grande, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I still don't really like, I mean, it's still really cool for me. I'm always like, wow, I can't believe I'm working with him. But also with uh, Lisa and Horn Gilder's assistant or slash, they kind of both act as management. Um, they're both amazing. I started working with them in April and I released my first song in June. And since working with them, this is how far I've come. And I'm like, that, that's crazy. But I started working with them because I was trying, I didn't know how to get press. So I was like, followed some people who were friends of friends who I could see were getting press and stuff was happening. And I was like, how are you doing that? And one of them connected me with someone. I'm not gonna say the name, but <laughs> my mom was like, you should send that contract he sent you. Cause he was like, oh, I love your songs. I'm down to like help you with PR and sent a contract. And then my mom was like, send it to the lawyer. And then I sent it to the lawyer and I was so disappointed because he immediately sent back like, don't sign this contract. Like it's like not working like in caps and in red my mom's like he never is that intense like there's something seriously wrong and I was so upset like because I was so excited that I finally found anything yeah yeah and then I guess the lawyer could see that I kept asking things and was like all right fine like I represent this guy I'll set you up with him and it was Charlie and then Charlie and then Lisa apparently convinced him to have a meeting with me. And then they were like, oh, I want to work with her. And that's how it happened. So randomly. So like if I didn't try to reach out to people on Instagram, I would have never met him. 
Yeah, what a great connection. And it's really, you know, it is tough. It's tough to get your, your word out there. It's tough to compete with so much content out there as well. So to have those right connections in place is, is a yeah. huge help. Basically just proves that if you just talk to anyone, you can eventually they'll be like, okay, fine, talk to this person. And you're like, yes. <laughs> that's gotta feel really good you feel 20 feet tall my mom's even... always like see you were upset like and i'm like oh my god stop I get it. <laughs> <You were right. laughs> so what are your memories of like speaking to your parents and all that memories you were in the west village um did you grow up there it sounds like you've been around quite a bit too i grew up in the west village and then when i was 14 my whole family moved to zurich so i finished high school there and then when I graduated, I went to Tulane in New Orleans. Wow. And what, what, what a variety there. <laughs> New York to Zurich to uh, New Orleans. And, and the yep. cultural differences. Amazing. And then I, I studied psychology there. <laughs> um, I just didn't really know how to do, like, I didn't, like, it wasn't possible for me at the time to study music. It's everything I tried to look at. It was like, you basically need to be a professional pianist or already or like amazing at cello or something like that. And I was like, I'm just 17 and have nothing, but I just know that I'm going to be a musician. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I guess I, I'm not doing that. And I studied psychology. And then I went for a year abroad in Berlin. And then I went back to New Orleans to finish my degree in psychology. And then I moved back to Berlin and then was like, oh, in my last term, I was like, I'm going to do music business now because I need to know something about it in order to ever do anything. Like the fact that I had took that class is the only reason I got an internship at BMG. So when I graduated, I moved back to... Sorry, this is long. Are you asking? Oh, that's story? fine. No, that's fine. No, it's 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 an interesting history, though. I mean, just the the variety there. So, what was it like? I mean, the, the cultural differences, especially like, how was the music scene in Berlin for you? Yeah. So there, when I was there, I got really into techno, um, which happens to many people, I guess. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I want to teach myself how to DJ. This is all while I was having my sound engineering course that I didn't really care for that much. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just bought some used CDJs and taught myself and then played one mini festival in Germany. And then once I had to move back to New York for my job at BMG had that one show to try to get shows with in New York with, from like recorded sets I did. And it kind of just snowballed pretty quickly where I was getting a lot of shows from like people who would be at my other shows wanting me to DJ. Cause I was, it's kind of like a niche um, genre in New York cause I was playing like melodic techno. So- Ooh, melodic techno, oh, that's neat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I just met a, met all these people who just basically only play melodic techno as well. And we would always play with each other. It was really fun. I was sad when I realized it had died from Corona. I was like, no, but now it's happening again with singing that it's snowballing. So I'm happy that the work is paying off because I've literally just started emailing everyone who I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what is your writing process like? Uh, do you hear a melody? Do you start with that? Um, or do you start with lyrics and then set melody to that? I usually start off, I got a lot of inspiration when I'm just like on public transport or walking around. Yeah. Um, I usually come up with lyrics first or at really random moments I'll suddenly get like a melody for a hook in my head and one word will randomly pop out to me and then I'll write something based on that. And then I usually start with a hook and then I go to the piano at home and try to like work out the chords and then write a melody on the piano for the verses and then write to that. So it happens yeah, yeah. But when I'm really sad about something, I just read all the lyrics first. 
Yeah. Which yeah, can be harder at times. Neat. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really, really neat. So, and then the recording process, especially these days, uh, how are you doing that? Are you just recording basically in one place, sending files around and having mix masters deal with that? Or are you really going into studios? I know you have that over there in London. Uh, how's that all coming together? It happens just based on where I am and what, if I have to be in London or not. So. Is it a crime I recorded the vocals at Goldsmiths? But people in New York produced, I, I produced it and then people in New York, I sent the stems to them and they just finalized it because I'm not too good at mixing and mastering and like added some touches or whatever. And so I recorded that one. The rest, I go to LA now mostly and record and while I'm there record and write like two to three songs with the producers in the time I'm there. And then some of them like I this is this is the second one I produced for my class last term, the like production one, where I went to LA already and recorded sorry, <laughs> recorded some vocal recorded the vocals but something's missing. So I'm going into Goldsmith next week to like Zoom with them and finish recording. So I can really do either. I think I'm gonna try to send more ideas over to producers this time where they send the track and I just record it at Goldsmith because I have to be in London until I graduate mostly. But I'm going to LA in April. So I'll record stuff there, but just wherever I can record, honestly. <laughs> yeah, really. And these days you could do that. It's really fascinating. Anxiety was in New York. It's yeah. Anxiety and Stranger were both recorded in New York. Wow. And then you're into music videos. How, how what's that's probably got to be a whole different animal uh, shooting that. Some really nice looking videos. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I've only done two so far, but. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, yeah. well shot, edited. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. The guy I work with is Dwayne Thompson. He's really good. Um, it's fun. The first one I was nervous because I was like, now I suddenly have to act. Right, right. It, it, there's always more and more things you have to learn how to do that I didn't think of. So yeah, for that it was acting. But I think now I'm doing some performance training with Charlie as well, like movement calls. And that's getting me more comfortable on stage in general. And it's helping right. with the music videos as well. Yeah, so, it's, it's really theatrical when you get up there, when you're performing. It is. That, that is acting in its own way. Yeah, so I'm going to record my third one in like three weeks. And we're going to make it more like in the studio vibe. And I'm going to do some actual acting. And I'm excited. I think that'll be sick. <laughs> so you'll do the video in London? Yeah, yeah, I think we're actually going to rent an Airbnb for a night and film it there. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. that that sounds really, really amazing. Have you been doing uh, uh, live concerts on online, like doing Facebook Live or anything like that? I did a lot of live DJ sets, but never like a singing one. But I'm recording one next week, next Sunday for like a live stream to raise money for this uh, charity called War Child. And yeah. that's gonna be streamed online, I think three weeks after, I don't remember the exact date. And people can like donate to the charity and stuff. So that'll be good. That'll be like a, not live live, but, oh no, I think it comes out that day live. And then you can watch it until, I don't know. I'm still confused about it, but that's going to be a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good charity. I think I've interviewed people who've uh, been involved with that. that that's that's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Who inspired you growing up? What type of uh, music? I mean, obviously you probably listen to a melange of music for all the places you've been, but who like there at the top echelon really inspired you? I don't, I don't have the particular person, 
I honestly just always liked music and could tell that I could, I was like pick things out uncon like subconsciously, not unconsciously <laughs> of what I hear from like pop songs, just certain aspects of them. And then I'll put it together in my mind into one song that I feel like I just hear things that I can tell other people don't hear and they're like that song sucks and I'm like but this part's sick so I'll just take that part and like yeah. that inspires me to do something in another song it's not really a specific person it's just I'm doing my own thing but I mean right now I listen to more indie pop and I make more pop pop so it varies a lot yeah yeah I mean were you always just like in the top 40 or did you did you get into any kind of classic rock or anything beyond that jazz oh yeah blues? I really liked um I really liked ACDC growing up <laughs> and then just like random people like my parents would play the bare naked ladies or something like <laughs> But my, I, this is the thing, like, I don't, my parents, I can't ever remember a certain thing that my parents played, and, like, I feel like they didn't really play that much, besides, like, Shania Twain, and, like, oh, Joan Jett, I heard a lot, my dad's favorite, I liked, I wanted to do, I guess, but those didn't really have, those didn't really influence me, like, I got into jazz, obviously, in New Orleans, and then I got into techno in oh, yeah. Berlin. So, but New Orleans kind of had the influence where I would hear a lot of top 40s, yeah. So yeah, I was that's... like, yeah. there were always certain songs I was just like, I'm embarrassed that I like this song. <laughs> but I know that there's parts of it that's intriguing to people. Like, you know what I mean? When people are like, oh, pop's lame. <laughs> right isn't cool to like you know they're the really pop i'm like something's working there though like <laughs> they're doing something right it's very catchy yeah i could say for years yeah things that i liked and it's like i wouldn't admit that in high school because you know kids where i were was at a high school they liked you know acdc ozzy osbourne people like that so oh yeah no and especially at tulane like all the bars just played only top 40s I would cringe so hard if I went, honestly. But <laughs> there were some that were sick. Like, I really liked The Weeknd. Yeah. And Who Charlie and, Walk has uh, worked with as well, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I, I really liked um, that. I'm not embarrassed by liking The Weeknd. <laughs> Just yeah, clear. nothing wrong with that. But yeah, then I liked jazz, then techno, and I really, really liked techno. So that's why I was trying to do, I was like singing on techno tracks a lot in New York under my DJ name. And then I was trying to do a combination, but I, I was struggling to find a combination that wasn't being turned into EDM. And I just, just can't, I just don't like EDM at all. So I'm just going the pop route right now. I mean, some of them are more electronic, but yeah. Cool. So on your website is pretty uh, up to date, really fresh and everything. What's behind the... When uh, did you look at it? When did you look at it? Um, maybe in the last week or so. I, I noticed this thing about the uh, I'm Around sticker that because uh, you have some merch on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I love that. I mean, that's just one of my catchphrases. Like I have these things that I say a lot and that everyone just starts saying automatically for some reason. Yeah. It'll be like I'm around, like everyone I know says I'm around, which just means like I'm here. Or if you're drunk, you'll be like, I'm around, like I'm just drunk. Like it you can mean so many things. And then time to freak is one, uh, which is just like That's time cool. to party, time to do it just time to whatever you want it to be and then nothing matters sounds like it's nihilistic which I guess it is but I think that came mostly from like me and my friend who had anxiety would be like nothing matters and then just move on and everyone's like oh that makes us feel better nothing matters and we're like sweet 
<laughs> but yeah, I have the stickers here somewhere. They're all over the place. Yeah, you always have gotta have merch. <laughs> I bought, I'm around t-shirts too. <laughs> and yeah. Hoodies. It's catchy. It really is. It'll get people to start asking the questions and then, you know, that leads to your whole uh, act. It's a, it's, a, it's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Wow. Well, it's been fantastic speaking with you this That's afternoon so where you Thank are. You. Absolutely. And best wishes and best luck on you. You're on a, working on a big paper right now. Yeah, it's my final paper for critical musicology. I'm writing about like platforms like social media and streaming. Excellent. It's long. <laughs> well, best wishes. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a great well, talking to you. Great speaking with you. Have a great evening. Take care. You too. Bye.